So what is up guys, Nick here, helping you to master your technology, iPhone 13 over six months later. Now, I haven't had the green one that long, but I had, I had the blue one, I swapped it out, but I still had this since launch day. It's actually around seven months now, but you can see we're only a few months away from the iPhone 14. So we got June, July, August, September, we'll have a new iPhone. So we're pretty deep into the cycle for this iPhone 13. This is basically the default iPhone choice for a lot of people, $699, still around that price iPhones have classically been at. You know, this phone is gonna cost you a little bit more than 700 with tax, maybe even the eights, depending on the storage capacity you go with. So it's no cheap device right here, but it's definitely not the higher end $1,000 plus iPhone. And you know, considering what you're gonna pay for this now, much better device than the iPhone 10. I would say here in 2022. So it's a pretty good value phone, I would say. Now, the first thing I wanna talk about is what I've enjoyed about this phone so much is actually related to the iPhone XR. You might be saying, well, what do you mean? Well, I mean that the same, this phone actually slots in the same category the XR slotted in a few years ago, but you're getting such a better deal here. You're getting a squared body that feels industrial, feels beautiful, an OLED display, same size as XR, but OLED display here, 5G performance, dual camera, same multiple colors, and I just feel like the people who got a 10R years ago did it had a great phone, but you're getting such a better phone here with the iPhone 12 than you were gonna get back then. So a very good deal here. I constantly think about that when I think about the iPhone 13. Did I say iPhone 12? I think I might've said that, iPhone 13. What I've enjoyed most about this device also is the design. I just really love the way the iPhone 12 looked and bringing it here back to the iPhone 13 is actually pretty gorgeous as well. I have something that is wearing on me a little bit though and that is the notch. I'm kind of annoyed with this Apple notch here. You know, I just wanna see them do a little bit different. They've been doing this for years already, like five years since the iPhone 10. Yes, it's a little bit different. Still looks basically the same though. I like to see something a little bit different going forward. And some people say, well, that's what makes them Apple. Well, yeah, but when they do something different, they're still gonna do something different than you know another manufacturer, which will still make them Apple. So definitely think that they need to get rid of this thing and kind of switch it up a little bit, kind of let us know this is the new phone, this is the future of iPhone. We're, I think we're at that point at this point, but I actually think the overall build is very solid. It's very durable. You know, I never feel too nervous about the actual build falling apart, anything like that, the glass. You know, honestly, I think you could rock this with just a screen protector. And if you do drop it, you will ding it up, but it's gonna be pretty durable and not gonna fall apart super easily. But if you definitely wanna protect it, a case is always recommended, even if it's a thin clear case, something like that, recommended. I do keep it, I do keep my 13 in a clear case like this. Just a little thin one to keep it protected, can still see the color and stuff like that. The design over the six month period though, has always remind, reminded me of the 13 Pro. It's got that nice weight, you know, it's actually lighter than the 13 Pro, significantly lighter, about 30 grams or so. And it just feels right, like it's a good balance. You know, I, I don't know how to describe it. Can my hand show it? It just, if, if it fits in the hand good, you can reach things pretty well. You know, it's not overly large. It's kind of like that sweet spot between a super ridiculously large phone and a small phone. You can see why this is pretty much a default option for a lot of people. The main phone most people will go for in the iPhone 13. So definitely I'd say very good balance, very good size here. The design looks good. I like how they, uh, turn the cameras a little bit just so you can tell that this is the 13 and not the 12. Very nice overall package. Over my six months, again, closer to seven months, I've really enjoyed the display and a couple elements I really thought about a lot was I like how they brought this brightness up to the 11 Pro levels and I always enjoyed that. I always felt like, you know, I'm getting a brighter display than I would have expected for the money. You know, a couple years ago, you get about a 650 nit display, something like that. Now you're getting like 800. So you're getting like the prior iPhone Pro level brightness on the regular iPhone 13. So very much enjoyed that. It also was pretty easy to see outside. Not as easy as a Galaxy phone, but pretty easy nonetheless. I also find that if you do go into, you know, news or whatever, this display is plenty wide enough to easily read 
due to its aspect ratio of a 19.59, it's not a super narrow panel. So reading was enjoyable, and that's why you can still get this iPhone 13 not being a massively large phone and still easily consume content because of the width of the display. You know, it can get a lot of text and a lot of things in this panel, even though it's not a 6.7 inch, 8 inch like a Pro Max. So you definitely don't need that to consume content. It's been very good. I also think the color calibration on here is very good as well. So we're looking at, you know, a phone that has very good OLED technology, which gives you some nice saturation and punch in your colors. But it also isn't like overly colorful. You're like, why is that display looks so overly colorful? They just nailed the calibration on the panel. So very good. One thing that does disturb me though, is that the display at 60 Hertz, I'm just like, come on Apple, let's get some promotion on this phone as well. It just, at this price, there's just so many phones that have a 90 Hertz or a 120 Hertz. So I'd like to see this get a little smoother in the future. Even something like a Pixel 5, I believe it was, had a 90 Hertz display at a, a less price than this. So definitely, you know, the iOS makes up for it being a super smooth software. You don't really have any lag or anything like that, but you can just see that choppy scroll compared to the iPhone Pros, the iPad Pros, and other Android smartphones at a similar price with 120 hertz displays. It just looks a little bit embarrassing by comparison at this money. The next one is software. So we are looking at iOS 15.4.1. It seems like we've been waiting for an update forever at this point, but iOS 15.4.1 has been solid. I don't have any reloads, anything like that. I literally have not had a single app reload on this phone, like where it crashed or bugged out, anything like that for the device. It pretty much performs perfect. There's, It's a flawless performer in my experience with this software. In addition, I do like, I've been enjoying app library and the widgets. I just enjoy the polish and consistency of the iOS platform. It continues to be a great day-to-day -day phone where you don't really have to think too much about the software. You just use it and you get on with your day. Really enjoy that. Software updates have come in regularly for the iPhone 13, which is something I can't say about some competing phones, and I really enjoy that. Overall, though, I gotta say, pretty good. It, it was a little bit worse, like with some bugs earlier on in 15, but and now with the 15.4.1, they've cleaned up most of it, and it's pretty much a flawless performer. And since we're talking about performance, we could just say the A15 also contributes to that. You know, that A15 CPU in there clocked in at 3.23 gigahertz with four gigs of RAM seemed to be plenty enough, even though you're not looking at six gigs of RAM, it was plenty enough to pop open my apps, do what I need to do day to day, and you know, run the cinematic mode and all the camera features in here. Definitely did a great job in that front. So. I didn't actually miss my Pro series at all with this phone. Over six months, I gotta say that I've enjoyed that this phone has basically the same camera as the iPhone 13 Pro. Now it is missing the macro mode, which I do miss quite a bit. If you're into taking photos like that, some people say just zoom in a little bit and you'll be fine or take the photo and crop. That's extra work. I still like the macro modes, but I gotta say, for you know what you're paying, you're getting essentially the same features. You can get these filters in here to change it out how you like. You get the, vi the video mode, like cinematic mode, which is also found in the iPhone 13 Pro. And then you could do 4K 60. You still have the ability to tweak the resolutions here, or not the resolutions, the aspect ratios right here. So it almost feels like I'm using a Pro iPhone camera just without that telephoto. And I do miss the telephoto when I'm out taking photos of wildlife and you know buildings and things that are far away and I gotta zoom in on something. Then I'm like, ah, I wish I had my telephoto. But there's not too many occasions where that is absolutely necessary. So the iPhone 13 has an incredible camera. We've talked about it before and it continues to impress me. I just am super excited to see what Apple does next because this phone just is it's just a, it's just an amazing camera. In addition, I do think they can improve the front facing camera. I believe the front facing camera has been around on this phone since the iPhone 11. So even though it's still really good and better than most competing i or competing Android phones on the front, I would say that this is an area they can seriously improve upon just to show us, yeah, we got even a better camera now on our front facing shooter for the next iPhone 14. And I wanna talk quickly about the battery life. So if I go over here to the battery life on this iPhone, the battery life on this phone has been very good. Like 
probably maybe better or about the same as the iPhone 13 Pro easily makes it through a full day like this 32 40 something like that easily makes it through a full day and i don't even think twice about it and that's something you can't say about again like a galaxy s22 i'm thinking about that battery when i'm using that phone so definitely all day battery life on this phone even with heavier usage very good it also doesn't get too warm under heavy use unless you're really pushing it but definitely all day battery life easily achieved for the iPhone 13. Some people might even make it a couple days on this phone, depending on their use patterns. If they're not a super heavy user, they're just using it for general tasks. I think some people may in fact make it through two days on this phone. It's that good. Quick thought on the audio performance. Didn't really think much about it. It actually performed just about like the other iPhones did from past years. Maybe slightly better sound, but it, it didn't really. I didn't even think about it, honestly. So let's talk about the phone call quality really quickly here. I've been majorly impressed with the reception strength on this phone, the 5G performance. It's one of my favorite things since the iPhone 12, and it only got better here for the 13. Finally, I don't even think about this anymore. It's just really good. It does a really good job there. Phone call quality is great. I, don't, I have never had a drop call for these iPhone 13s, any of them, so... This one is also in that category. So in conclusion, over my six months, this long-term experience with the 13, this phone is near perfection. It's just missing a couple things to give it that title. And I'd say that I love to see an all-screen display, like no notch and somehow get that face ID under the display or, you know, some other thing up here. 120 Hertz, you know, would have made it almost like a pro phone. But I also think that Apple could bring, you know, a camera, a telephoto to this and then bring like four cameras to the next phone. Then, I mean, we got nearly a perfect phone right here. Some people probably already think this is the perfect phone. But um, yeah, it's getting to the point where smartphones are so mature now. They've been refined over the years. They've been around for a long time. They're just getting so good that it don't really matter which phone you go with. You're going to get a good phone. But this is going to be definitely, I think, probably the best standard recommendation. I know like five people that have this phone already. Like it's a lot of people really enjoy the iPhone 13. It's a really great device. So that's it for me over seven months later. There's not really much to complain about with it. I told you a few things I thought that can be improved. Let me know your thoughts on the iPhone 13. Do you have one? Do you plan on getting one? Are you planning on picking one up in the future? Just like Nick, bro. It's over with. Let's talk about 14 now. You ready for the 14? Let me know down below in the comments. I'll catch you all in the next episode. Nick here. Be sure to be well and peace.